the word it is taken from genesis chapter 42 verses 18 through 22 and 36 through 38 joseph said to them do this and you will live for fear for i fear god if you are honest men let one of your brothers stay while you are in prison while the rest of you go back and take grain to the starving households but you must bring the your youngest brother to me so that your words may be verified and that you may not die this you proceed to do they said to one another surely we are being punished because of our brother we saw how distressed he was when he pleaded for his life but we would not listen that is why distress has come upon us reuben replied i did didn't i tell you not to sin against the boy but you wouldn't listen to me now we must give an accounting for his blood their father jacob said to them you have deprived me from my children joseph is no more simon is no more and now you want to take benjamin everything is against me we are still uh, continuing with uh, our study of the book of genesis and i took a little turn last sunday to talk about joseph uh, the son of the beloved wife of jacob uh, rachel's son that they expected for a long time and then his step brothers took him outside and sold him to foreigners and then came back home and gave the news that he was killed by an animal jacob was grief stricken he was broken um and things are not going the way he would like to go um and now another turn in his life that is getting worse where he laments jacob laments himself and saying that my son joseph is gone my son simeon is gone and now you are taking my the youngest son benjamin also and everything is against me have you ever had those times in your life days or weeks or months when your whole world seems to be crashing down and the times when everything seems to work against you nothing goes the way you want to go not only that it also it's coming back against you i have i don't have a lot of those to remember but there have been some instances in my life also that things are not only going the way you want but but actually coming against you and nothing seems to work things are going against you uh, there are some people who have dramatic experiences like this and you know the life of job he lost everything and he started everything coming against him even his wife turned against him and say curse god and die it's better than leading a life of this kind of faith i was reading a news happened uh, in rock island tennessee in 2008 person by name jerry hill 42 years old he got into his car going to his work and he was stressed out with many things at his work and he was turning on the highway right front in front of his house and then um he was on the path of an oncoming car that he didn't see and then got a big on a big crash and uh, his wife who heard the crash from the house she ran outside while she was cooking and leaving the kitchen stove and she saw her husband in the accident and tried to go there and help out with him forgot about everything at the kitchen and then um within minutes the house was on fire and they called the firefighters the same firefighters who came to help out the accident had to put out the fire of the house and then he was flown in a hel- helicopter because of his condition to the hospital and then he was discharged after three, three or four days after in the hospital and then he got a ticket for not yielding to the traffic so this is a man the driver gets in wreck sees his home catch on fire gets a ticket and ends up in the hospital that's how the title read the whole thing happened together with so many things happening together out of control don't know what to do 
So this is sometimes life can be so dramatic. Um, it does not happen all the time, but to some people it can happen. And um, there are people in the Bible, like I said, Job, for example, is one of them. And Jacob is one of them like that. He's lamenting himself that is saying, by saying that everything is against me now. What happened here is, as we remember the story of Joseph, the puzzle pieces put together like a puzzle piece, a beautiful picture at the end. Joseph is the son of Jacob, who they had been waiting for from his beloved wife Rachel. And finally they had a baby. And he was growing up. He was about 17 when his stepbrothers took him outside or he joined with them in the outside tending sheep and they did not like him because of all the things that Jacob loved him specially. So they decided to kill him. But for some reason they changed their plans and finally sold him to some foreigners and they took Joseph to Egypt where he was put in prison for nothing of his own fault. And, but he was all faithful and always trusted in God. Eventually God raised him from all of that situation and he became the second in um, line for Pharaoh and was ruling Egypt at that time. So his life was a beautiful picture of a puzzle piece that we talked about, that how the mis all those pieces will come together. Sometimes we don't understand why good people are being put in prison like that, or why good uh, bad things happen to good people. So we don't understand those things. Very good picture of a puzzle in Joseph's life that eventually became a whole big beautiful picture. So always look for the bigger picture that God is putting together when we don't understand a little piece in our lives why we are going through that. We saw that in Joseph's life. So according to the story that the stepbrothers gave Jacob, Jacob now thinks that Joseph is dead because a wild animal killed him. That's the story that they told him. So he's gone. Now there was another child that was born to Rachel after Joseph. But the sad thing of that event was during the childbirth his beloved wife Rachel died and the baby survived and was the second son in Rachel and the baby's name was Benjamin. So now you can imagine how much Jacob would love that little baby of his loved, beloved wife who already has died and also his other son Joseph is gone. So you can imagine how much love he was loving with that little baby. He would not let him go anywhere. He was holding, um, holding him so close to him. And that is when the big famine broke out and Jacob and family were also affected by the famine. They had no way to find food anywhere, but they heard the news that there is food in Egypt. And because of all that plans God put together through Joseph, Egypt was flourishing. Because Joseph was ruling that country and God gave him the wisdom and the vision that there will be a famine coming. And so he stored up all the grains and he worked out a great plan to survive this famine. So there was plenty of food in Egypt while the rest of the world of that area was completely in famine and, uh, and, and dying of starvation. So Jacob and family, because of the famine and dying um, uh, starvation, they decided to go to Egypt and get some food. And Jacob sent his rest of the children, the ten sons. He did not send Benjamin, the youngest one. See, he loved him so much the other ten sons to Egypt to get some food there and they went there. And uh, in the story I told you that Joseph disclosed him in the beginning but in the beginning he did not disclose himself. Even though he knew his brothers, he realized it was his brothers but they did not recognize Joseph. So they, they went there but Joseph was kind, kind of played a little game there and he did not disclose himself to them. He took uh, the opportunity to let them know that their history is being drawn out by a wise God through all of these things. That is what I learned from 
Joseph's action there. So there he told them that he, he, these brothers came there to spy on the land and uh, he questioned them. And he put them in a questioning uh, cell or a prison for three days, starting to question them about his family, his brothers, his, uh, their um, father, their rest of the family situation. He wanted to find out all these things because he missed all of that stuff. And, and they told him all the story about Jacob and all the things uh, that happened uh, while Joseph was away. They did not recognize Joseph, but Joseph recognized him. Um, he asked them many questions about their family and uh, brothers and Rachel's son Benjamin. And also he did not send him with the others because Benjamin was still staying back with uh, Jacob. But Joseph wanted to see Benjamin so badly. It was his own brother, his mother's son, that he missed so much as a baby. So he wanted to see Benjamin. So what he told the brothers that, you go back, I will give you the food that you want, you go back to your father with a promise that you will bring back Benjamin to me. And they know it's not, it's not going to happen. Because Jacob would not let his little baby go anywhere. And he holds him so close. So they, they're in a big trouble now. And also Joseph said, before you go, you will have to keep one of your brothers here as a guarantee, like a hostage. So he took Simon or Simon and he kept him aside and said, the rest of the nine go back and bring Benjamin. I will keep Simeon here. They were all in big trouble, stressed out. They didn't know what to do. It's not good news for them. Even though they have got food, they go back to their father and tell him that one of the sons is now held hostage in Egypt. And also the king there is asking his youngest child, Benjamin, to be taken back to them. It's not going to happen as long as Jacob lives. That's what Jacob says too. Not only that, they were being accused of the spies and um, Brother Simeon was being held as hostage. They came back home with all the grains to their bags and they opened their bags. They found out that the, the money that they paid was put back in their bags as well. And Joseph told his servants to do that. But they were more afraid now. So they might be accused of stealing now. They did not understand what was going on. So they were all put in a stressful situation like this. And that's what we read today. The brothers are telling to each other, remember Joseph when we did it to him? Now everything's coming back to us. You know, one of them was saying, did I tell you don't do this to my brother? You know, we talk to each other like that. When they all planned together and sold him to these uh, foreigners. Anyway, they were all put in this trustful situation, came back to the father with food, which is good, but the sad news is that one of the brothers is still he being held there and they have to take Benjamin back. They have struggled with for several years because the food was running out and Jacob would not let Benjamin go. They didn't have a choice but go back to Egypt to get more food. But how do they go? without taking Benjamin. They would, you know, Joseph or the ruler there would not give them anything or they would not let them go back if they go there with, without Benjamin. So finally Jacob said, Jacob said the statement like this now. He's saying that Joseph is no more, Simeon is not here, now you are taking my youngest child, the loving child that I, my baby, Benjamin, and I don't know what to do. Everything is against me. And around, around this time, his father Isaac also passed away. So he has been hit with so many things from different angles. His dearest wife left him with a little baby. And his father passed away. And now, he's there taking Benjamin. They have no other choice to go back. So finally, one of them stepped in and said, Father, let me take Benjamin at the cost of my son's life. He is putting his own son uh, as, um, as a risk for taking Benjamin. And anyway, jo Jacob let Benjamin go also. So whenever we see these things that we tightly hold on to, 
In Jacob's life, that was a reality that he had to let that go. That is many times the message that we got from the numerous events that happened through this, this life events of Jacob. I love the life of Jacob. It is so much uh, vast and wide. That is why about half of the book of Genesis is about Jacob. And only the half is the rest of the stuff. It's one person through whom God called the great nation of Israel as chosen people. And Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And we saw that as well. So God's plans sometimes are not in our mind. We cannot comprehend those plans in our mind situations because we are limited by the experience of this life in this world. But God has a better plan and a bigger plan than you and I can think of or imagine. So now the only option is that Jacob needs to let Benjamin go. At that point, the cunning, intuitive, sometimes deceitful Jacob had nothing left for. He knew that letting Benjamin go might mean that Jacob would die before they come back from Egypt. That's what he thought. Jacob lost Rachel, then his father, then Joseph. Now Simeon is held in prison in Egypt. Now they are taking Benjamin. It was as if everything and everyone he loved had, that he had worked for all his life was being taken away from his hands one by one. Jacob himself cried out to God. He said, You have deprived me of my children. Joseph is no more. Simeon is no more. And now you want to take Benjamin. Everything is against me. If he would lose his last beloved son, he would lose his very own life. And he would not survive it. That's what he is complaining about. But when you look at it, is everything is against him, really? When things like that come to us, then even though we say that everything is against us, is everything is really against us? Have we really lost everything? Really, every, um, he thought he would lose his beloved son. He would lose his life. Sometimes that's the mistake that we make. The things that we hold on to, we think that if we let it go, it will be the end of our lives. But that is not so. If we trust in a God, nothing is an end of our life until God decides the end of our lives. So whatever we hold on to, thinking that that is the basis or, or holding on to things that, things that if we let that go, that will put an end to our lives, is not true. It is not really it is God is working out and God is the one who decides the end of our lives. Sometimes good things fall apart so better things can fall together. Somebody said that. That is very, very uh, real in Jacob's life at this situation. Wonderful words these are making, um, said, obstacle from every side, heartbreaks. When you experience bad things, we can step back and ask ourselves, what good can come out of this. And that is what the lesson we learn from Jacob. Eventually, you'll see that next uh, in the next lessons, we will see that, how God put all these things together and then blessed Jacob and called the nation of Israel. Eventually, they ended up in, how they ended up in Egypt. So pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. Many times we take our pain and take on suffering which is our own way of dealing with it. Pain is part of being human and everybody has to go through it. It is how we choose to think and act both during and after that pain that determines if we are suffering or not. Pain does not mean that we have to suffer. It is how we take that pain and deal with it. So God has given us the presence of his uh, presence all the time in our lives, the comfort of his presence in our lives, so that we don't have to suffer, even though we may be in pain. We don't have to suffer. Yesterday is history. We may not be able to do anything. And tomorrow we don't know what's going to happen. It's a mystery. But today is the present, which is a reality. Where God is with us today at this moment. And we don't have to worry or suffer anymore. His presence is always going to be there. 
And maybe that is what exactly we should be doing, that what you are afraid of doing, that God may want you to do it, to let Benjamin go, that you will be at peace more when we let those things let go of. Don't worry that you are not alone. That is another message that God gives us through this uh, life story of Jacob. There are saints who have gone before us, who had the similar experiences, but eventually they are trusted in a God who is eternal from generations to generations. He is the same. And he is still with us. So we don't have to suffer ourselves thinking that everything's going against us and then worrying and suffering in our lives. Keep calm and carry on. God is for us and who can be against us? Think about these things in our lives when things can come knocking against us hardly, like, very hard like this in Jacob's life where he was saying everything is against me. Absolutely not. Not everything is against us because God is for us all the time. If God is for us, who can be against us? Through our ignorance or misunderstanding or mistakes, sometimes we doubt God's presence in our life. We often consider things to be against us when they come together. But remember, it is not that they are against you. They are all working together for you in those kind of situations. We close, chose the um, closing hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. Um, we all probably know the story behind um, how this song was written by Horatius Spafford in the 1870s. Horatius Spafford was a great Christian businessman in Chicago who knew how to handle sorrow and he did it really very well. He had lost his only son when he was four years old to pneumonia. He lost part of his life savings in the Chicago, the great Chicago fire and then uh, when he started to rebuild his business and turn around his life in November of 1873. There was a revival meeting in England and he heard about that he wanted to go as family to attend. But for some reason, because of his business um, uh, job, he had to stay back even though he, they decided to go together as family, four daughters, his wife and himself. But he did, could not go because of some things happened so he stayed back. His four daughters and wife left in a ship to attend that revival meeting in England. On the way, the ship, um, his family was on, collided with another ship and sank in 12 minutes. All three, all four of these daughters died in that shipwreck. And the, only the mother was left alone. And she was rescued. And then when she was taken to the land, she sent a telegram to Mr. Stafford, uh, Stafford in uh, Chicago saying that saved alone, what shall I do? But he found true comfort in the Lord hearing this news. So he decided finally to take a ticket and go back to join his wife in England. And when he, was, when he boarded the ship, he told the captain of the ship and the staff to tell them the exact location where the other ship sank where his four daughters perished. So when they came, the ship came, his ship came to that particular location, they told him this is where exactly the accident happened. He went on to the deck and looked at the sky and thought about his own life. And he saw the place where through, through, through the winds and the storm around him. And then he went into his room with that heavy heart in his uh, heavy heart that he had in his life and went into his cabin and started praying and that's when God gave him this song when peace like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well with my soul remember when everything comes against you and you don't know why these things happen in your lives it is all, it is well with my soul. That's a blessed song that we are going to sing. And he continues to say that though Satan should buffet, though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and shed his blood for 
my soul. Hey, hey. 